Hey everyone, I am Kai Uchimura, also known as Coach Kai, host of Soccerpedia. For today's episode, I will discuss whether or not MLS, or Major League Soccer, which is the top division of soccer in the United States, is a quote-unquote retirement league. So, there are a good portion of soccer fans and followers on social media that say the MLS is a league where players that are past their peaks in their mid-30s or even late-30s arrive in the league to collect one final big paycheck before retiring because they are no longer good enough to play in the top leagues in the world. That seems to be their definition of a retirement league. So, it really depends on who you ask. However, A large percentage of players in the MLS are not in their 30s. There are many players at their peak playing in the MLS, just not maybe the quality of players compared to the top leagues in the world in the eyes of some. And what's wrong with that? The label of a retirement league also seems to include famous international players past their peak that did not necessarily retire with an MLS team, but made a stop but either went back to their home countries or other leagues to see out one or two final seasons like Tim Cahill, David Villa, and David Beckham, for example. Well, technically, David Beckham retired with Paris Saint-Germain in French Ligue 1 back in 2013, but hardly anybody considers that league to be a retirement league. Overall, by that definition and conclusion, it is not an invalid argument, There have been a number of players ever since MLS's inaugural season back in 1996 that have entered the league during the latter part of their playing careers often past their peak. This debate regarding the status and label of MLS as a retirement league has definitely increased since the arrival of David Beckham back in 2007 when he signed with the LA Galaxy. So let's get into it. In order to really discuss whether the MLS is a retirement league, we have to talk about the history of the MLS and what kind of players were in the league in the beginning, in the mid to late 90s, and what kind of salaries uh, players had during the early years before the arrival of David Beckham that changed the soccer landscape in this country. Back in those days, MLS of course largely consisted of American soccer players either straight from college with the likes of Eddie Pope and Brian Mason Weve. You also had uh, American national team players that were in their mid to late 20s to even early 30s who either played in the uh, American A-League prior to the creation of MLS or played in the uh, indoor professional soccer leagues to even those who did play overseas but were courted into playing in the MLS to try to raise the profile of the league. Uh, This would include the likes of Jeff A. Goose, Eric Winalda, Alexi Lawless, Thomas Dooley, Roy Lasseter, Mark Chung. They all fit the bill. And honestly, Thomas Dooley, who was captain of the men's national team, was the only one who was past 30 years old when he joined MLS in 1997. MLS did have a few international foreign superstars of the time. Most of them were from Central or South America, like Mexican goalkeeper Jorge Campos, but he was only 30 years old when he first joined MLS in 1996, and he still had quite a few more years left in the tank before he hung up the boots in 2004. MLS also had El Salvadorian legend Raul Diaz Arce. Uh, He was scoring left and right for DC United, and he was only 26 when he entered the league. So MLS was able to have foreign stars that weren't by any means past their primes to get the quote, retirement paycheck, you only had a a real small amount of foreign international stars that uh, you could say were past their peaks when the league first started. And the poster player for that description would be Carlos Valderrama, who was a famous Colombian soccer player, and he was 34 when he arrived in MLS, and he would retire from the league when he was 41 years old back in 2002. But honestly, there weren't a whole lot of those types of players who were well into their mid to late 30s uh, before joining the league. Probably the earliest instance of older players, especially non-American players that you could say were past their peaks to enter the MLS didn't really occur until the very late 90s, early 2000s. All of these players at one point represented their respective national teams. You had Petr Nowak, Roman Kosecki, Lubos Kubik, Carlos Hermosillo, 
Jorge Deli Valdez, among others, who of course, this was prior to the designated player rule was established, but still, I would imagine that they were the top salary earners for their respective teams. There wasn't a whole lot of information regarding player salaries during the inaugural season that I could find online, but what I was able to find was that during the 1996 inaugural MLS season, each team had a salary cap limit of $1.13 million. So there was a significant portion of players, especially those straight from college that were either role players or even fringe bench players, easily made less than $20,000 a year even if adjusted for inflation, would not be a whole lot of money, especially for a professional athlete. Eric Winalda, who was the soccer star, uh, American forward, reportedly earned $200,000 when he arrived in MLS. That amount of money was definitely the most a player could earn in the MLS at the time. I mentioned the salary cap a minute ago. The salary cap is a completely different system compared to the other leagues in Europe and honestly across the world, in which the owner is honestly free to spend however amounts of money to buy the world stars today. I think that is what keeps a lot of star players in, the, in their prime somewhat away from the MLS, because leagues like the Premier League, Bundesliga, La Liga, and Serie A, they all have massive budgets and can pay their players hundreds of thousands of dollars a week. They don't have to worry about a salary cap. That is sometimes more than what a vast majority of MLS players makes in a year. Even a squad player on a top notable team, let's say Juan Mata of Manchester United, for example, he is not a star player on that team. He's only 32 years old, which honestly isn't that old. One could argue that he is getting past his peak. He makes most of his appearances for Manchester United coming off the bench. However, he makes an annual salary of $9.3 million, which is equivalent to $180,000 a week. If Juan Mata came to play in the MLS, he would easily be a designated player and would probably swallow up a good portion of the salary cap, uh, which is currently $4.24 million for all the MLS teams. So he would have to take a significant pay cut if he or most stars from Europe uh, wanted to come over. Speaking of salaries and designated players, let's talk about David Beckham. He undoubtedly changed the soccer landscape in the United States. He arrived and played for LA Galaxy in 2007. He signed a five-year deal with an annual salary of six and a half million dollars. He was 32 years old at the time, so it's not like he was in the youth academy and a spring chicken anymore, but he wasn't necessarily ancient either. He still had some gas left in the tank. He still managed to make appearances for the English national team, albeit most of them came during his couple loan spells at AC Milan. David Beckham's arrival was able to happen because of a new rule adopted by the MLS called the Designated Player Rule, this allows MLS teams to have up to three, quote, marquee players that could be paid at a higher salary than the normal salary cap would allow. The rest would be covered by the MLS and the owners of the respective teams. As of 2020, the maximum budget charge that MLS will cover for a designated player is $612,500. Once David Beckham arrived, there were a series of high-profile players who made their way to MLS. Most, but not all players, were in their 30s, regarded as being past their physical peak. Most were European or South Central American and were assigned as designated players. These acquisitions of famous but older players did further the conversation that MLS is seen as a retirement league to the eyes of many soccer fans especially since several of them, uh, because they were designated players, did get paid a handsome amount of money. Some of these players that were signed early on as designated players uh, were the likes of Quatham McBlanco, Juan Pablo Angel, Freddy Jungberg, Guillermo Barros Chilotto, among others who were all older than 30 when they signed uh, for MLS teams. The thing is, is that soccer's foundation in America is different compared to all of the more higher rated leagues in the world. Soccer faced its hurdles when MLS was founded because America is one of the few countries on earth where soccer is not the most popular sport. 
the average person in America who didn't follow soccer a whole lot, especially let's say 10 to 15 years ago, would still probably know who David Beckham was. By design, having some of the higher profile yet aging players in the league isn't necessarily a bad thing because it was important for MLS to have people and fans come out to the games. The casual fan will probably more likely come out if there were more famous people playing because name recognition is very important. Within the past five to seven years, many of these designated players are not aging stars. They are either in their peaks or even not yet reached their peaks. Of course, there are a few exceptions to that rule because once again, name recognition. Yes, within the past five, seven years, you did have players like Andrea Pirlo, Frank Lampard, David Villa, Steven Gerrard, Wayne Rooney, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, Robbie Keane, Didier Drogba, and Torsten Frings all play in the MLS, but it helps the game grow and have further outreach in the MLS because name recognition brings in more money. Within the past couple years, many designated players now are not aging stars, like I mentioned. They are right at their peaks or even still in their early 20s. You have guys like Josef Martinez, Victor Wanyama, Alexandra Mitritsia, Carlos Vela, Josh Sims, Albert Rushnak, among others. All these guys still have years left in their professional careers. The league is transitioning. They are heavily scouting teenagers in South America. That's how Ezequiel Barco, Miguel Almarone, Jason Ramirez came over, and several more. So it's not entirely fair for the MLS to be considered a retirement league. There is a good mix of all types of players in different stages of their careers, just like in any professional league. It may be seen as a retirement league for top-tier talent that are past their prime, MLS is also a stepping stone for players to possibly transfer over into the more notable leagues in Europe, like in the cases of Miguel Almiron, Matt Miazga, DeAndre Yedlin. MLS has, uh, has seen players in the early to mid-2000s make their way over into Europe, with Clint Dempsey, Tim Howard, Carlos Bocanegra, Demarcus Beasley, and Jeff Cameron later on paving that way. MLS is also seen as an alternative and a reliable league for players from countries that are soccer passionate, but probably don't have as high of a salary base in the league, particularly in Latin America or Eastern Europe. Guys like Anton Nedjalkov, Ulysses Segura, Joseph Mora, Jose Martinez, for example. A few days ago, I interviewed Liechtenstein international player Denis Solanovic, who is only 24 years old, and he said that he would love to give MLS a try if the opportunity came knocking, because he heard good things about the league, and he's nowhere near hanging up his boots. In the world of sports and life in general, money is important. You want to be financially secure and stable. Who wouldn't? MLS is a relatively new league compared to everywhere else in the world. They did not have as big of finances at the time. So in the early days, if a young up-and-coming player uh, who had a choice of either getting paid millions of dollars for a European team and possibly play in the Champions League or get paid $100,000 or, or less a year in MLS at the time, I would bet 10 times out of 10 that that player would choose to go to Europe. It made sense for MLS to br maybe bring in aging, famous, or established stars into the league because those players already made the big bucks. They are already financially secure. They can take that chance and play in the MLS and still make a decent living and help the team sell more merchandise and help increase attendance. It is just smart marketing. Just because only a handful of players fit that, that description, should that image paint over the entire league? I don't necessarily think so. Every single player in the MLS today is not a 35 year old whose best days are behind him. I just think it's a bit lazy to describe MLS as simply a retirement league. That's just my take on it. That's it for today's episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And until next time.